Good mood today. I still haven't made up my mind whether to make this video in Korean or in English. English it is! Okay. Today I'm gonna be talking about the mental health of K-pop trainees and artists because it was one of the topics that were much requested. So here it is. I am personally also a little concerned yeah, I think the reason why many people were requesting this topic is because they're genuinely concerned about the artists that they like, which is sweet. And some people are curious about this side of K-pop. But I don't really think that this particular issue is confined to the K-pop world. Yeah, I think it's prevalent in all entertainment business. Okay, but here it goes. Um, before I get on with the topic, I want to answer some of the questions that were left in the comment section. One of the questions I got often was, why don't you produce your own song and have it out? It's really sweet, but I think this is like the big label training in me <laughs> talking. From the get-go, my dream was like Super Bowl, halftime show, big. So being independent, producing my own music and doing everything on my own doesn't really appeal to me. I actually respect people who do that and I enjoy listening to these music. And it has its own appeal, but it's not for me. I like the group effort, big money, big stage production. And just having my song out there just on its own without the big marketing bucks and runway stage outfit, 30 dancers behind me. And my dream has always involved so many things that companies with capital can provide. <laughs> just recording a song and just having it out and doing YouTube covers, not much different. Not at all different actually for me. So thank you for the sweet thoughts. But if that was a way to fulfill my dream, I would have done it already. But not, that's not me and I don't really have any regrets in that department. So yeah, that's that. Another question. How do trainees recognize one another or be friends with each other even though they are in different companies? Okay, so this is another back in my day kind of thing. Not that many trainees compared to now and not that many recording companies. Most of them were just located in this Cheongdamdong area. You didn't really have to be social to know the other trainees. I think it's just like there was one particular street that we all hung out before and after our training sessions. Like everyone had lunch and dinner at the pretty much same restaurant. It was really easy to bump into each other. There were a lot of mutual friends. Even if you are in different companies, you might have auditioned at the same company. So that's how people know each other. So it's two friends audition for the same company. One person gets in, the other person just ends up somewhere else. They introduce their respective friends. So that's how the natural relationships take place. I don't think that's the case these days because there are so many labels, so many trainees who come and go like that. So, but in my day, that was the thing. And do you guys have dorms in the company building. With JYP, not with their current building, but in the old building where, when I used to train, five-story building, and the fifth floor was the dorm for trainees. Rain, Noor, Star, Im jong I think 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. also lived there for a while. But with SM, the dorms were right behind the company building. So yeah, it's different for every company, and I don't think it has much meaning to that. Let's get into it. All right. So the reason why I have such great insight is because this is the K-pop world and this is the outside world. I've been on the boundary for a while. So I know what's going on through and through. I know the people, but I'm not in the industry. So people in the industry can talk to me. They don't have to explain every single thing out to me. So this company person or that business, they don't need to give me the background info. I already know. And because I'm not in the business, I'm not a competitor. I'm not a stakeholder in the industry. So I'm a really safe person to, 
talk about their issues. So a lot of people come to me with their issues and also due to many reasons, especially with boys. Some of my friends, we don't even follow each other on Instagram or any other social media just because we just don't want to invite higher as friends or you know, how close are you guys? None of that. So yeah, some people I am close with and nobody knows who they are. So all in all, I'm a really safe person to talk to, but I will not be revealing their secrets or give up any names you know, as usual. Myself also went through a lot of mental difficulties in my days. So I have a lot to talk about. I want to say like conservatively 80% People in the industry are not happy. I'm not saying they're like suicidal miserable, but not in a healthy state mental wise. And there are many reasons. It's not because they're weak people. There are a lot of factors contributing to this. Uh, let's start with the trainees. The biggest issues for trainees is the uncertainty of debut. If things get delayed, that's also a big stress. There's also, you know, family issues, school issues, personal lives. That's also a contributing factor. But I'd say the biggest issue would be the stress of not knowing whether you're gonna make it or not. Yeah, all sorts of debut related stress is the greatest. Companies also have training related stress. You have no idea how much trouble some trainees get into. Yeah, just like running off with married managers and hurting each other physically, emotionally, stealing stuff. Yeah, they do all sorts of crazy stuff. It's really, really hard to control the trainees. Whether or not you're a troublemaker doesn't really factor into your debut plan. You get to debut if you're the right person to debut. Back in my day, we didn't really have like a system to take care of mental health. It was just all about training and making trainees into good singers and good dancers. And as time passes and the system evolves, progresses, I think now nowadays there are a lot of companies who are trying to take care of the trainees' mental health, which I think is good. But I don't think it's helping because if you're a trainee and your company says, okay, this is the in-house or outsourced therapist who will come and talk to you once a month and everything is privileged, you don't need to worry, blah, blah, blah. But do you think the trainees will actually fully open up and talk about all these issues. Even if you have like a really trustworthy company therapist, I don't know, a lot of trainees, I don't think they would told every single thing that stresses them about their training. Cause to the company, even if the therapist don't really deliver all the details, he or she can say, he's stressing out, she's worried about something. You know that the gist of it is gonna get delivered to the company and you don't wanna come off as someone to be worried about. You want to come off as a healthy, ready trainee who can debut this moment. Even if you have like a really good system, I don't know if it's going to be a lot of help. It's inevitable to be stressful because plans are changing all the time. Unstable nature of it all just persists through your whole career. So you just have to get used to it. I think it would be better if the companies, instead of having like a company therapist, would help trainees and artists to find their own because it's really different for everybody. Somebody might have really great progress with this therapist when this person has nothing going on with that therapist. So having your individual customized therapist session would be best, but I don't think any recording company can afford to put in that much time, effort, and money to do that. And so after you debut, you now have a different set of concerns. So if you're busy, you're stressed. If you're not busy, you're stressed. If people talk about you, that's stressful. If people don't talk about you, that's stressful. This is where your nature kicks in. So some people are naturally, just they're just born with the capacity to handle gossip. If you enjoy it, that's the best. I know many people, very famous K-pop artists who enjoy this. Even if it's bad stuff, they just handle it with confidence and I admire that. Some people overstress. They just can't stop like every hour. They're searching their name on every portal website. Some people are stressed about relationship with other celebrities. Some people are stressed about their relationship with the company. Some singers are stressed about which song they should put it out as their first single, second single. They get suicidal about it. I had many phone calls from the Han River Park. It could be a big deal. You may think it's not, but I actually understand why they're doing that. It's your song. 
that song is coming out with your name and whether or not the single is the first single or the second single could mean life and death for this artist so I, I feel for these people if you don't really care and you're just all carefree and happy-go-lucky with whatever decision your company's doing good for you and your mental health but what does it say about you artistically? you know, even if you're an idol you want to have some of the credit for your artistry, right? I think this kind of stress is good kind of stress so you can't have everything you can't be mentally just perfectly healthy all the time there will be stressful moments i mean which job doesn't come with some kind of stress but yeah particularly i think the k-pop industry definitely comes with a lot more baggage in the end it all comes down to you being strong enough or relaxed enough to handle it all both of it i think it's an instinctive thing you're born with it but it's harder i think to be relaxed than to be strong strong you can just you know will it just power through but to be really really relaxed it takes i don't know it takes a lot of luck i think if you want to get into the business you have to know that it, it will entail a lot of stress and I think it's good to have your support system for some people it's food for some people it's boyfriend girlfriend for some unfortunate people it's drugs and drinking I think having a solid support system is the best mechanism I also think it's better for people to start their k-pop career at least when they are in college you know when you're too young and you haven't developed your set of principles towards life and you get bombarded with all these glitzy glam k-pop stuff it's very easy to be vulnerable to a lot of mental crisis yeah but that's not how it works but yeah and i also don't want to lay the blame or responsibility on the labels 100 percent because they could be doing everything they can but if you don't open up to them who knows what's going on they can't take care of something that they don't know yeah that's that's a dilemma it, it feels really uncomfortable to end this video on such a sad note but yeah that's all i have for today thank you for watching as always and leave any questions or comments down bye bye